And we're back. And standing in the cold. Poor, poor. Uh, I heard three and then nothing else. Ah, damn it. Give me a second, guys. Apparently the, our, the screen share thing is being weird. Uh, one second. Alright, well, now we might have finally figured out the audio issue by just swapping to a different... by swapping back to Skype, so... At least I think... You can still hear me, right? Yeah, I can still hear you. Alright, so we're back. And poor... poor Nelson's just been stuck here in the snow. It cannot be comfortable for him. But we found a screwdriver. Someone left a screwdriver in the alley beside the hotel. Looks clean. Probably of no consequence. Which means, of course, it's probably going to be of great consequence. Uh, of course. What, what? What is it? It's it's something. It's some someone's shotgun. Which uh, can't remember the name of it. Chekhov's gun. Chekhov's gun. That's it. It's Chekhov. That's Chekhov's so the screwdriver right there. Newspaper clipping might be uh, of importance. Well, the newspaper clipping was what we got the puzzle for last time. Oh right. Uh, nothing in the garbage cans. Let's go back inside, just so we can go back outside again. I think it's time to head on out. Use this here snowmobile. I suppose. Oh, a new puzzle. Help wanted. I hear that shop recently hired the local high school football team. The whole team? Yeah. The varsity muskrats got after school jobs at Hank's window shop. They can't see at football practice. Help them complete a pass without breaking any glass. Oh, this is interesting. So I think we have to send a pass between these guys without breaking glass to do it. Oh. So I see. No, that'll break glass. That one. Reset. Okay. Top, top right. To middle one. To bottom left. Up. And there. over. Yep. Or to here, to here, to here. There, yeah. There you are. Pass completed. Uh, well, that takes care of that one. Anything else interesting? Maybe Excuse talk to me, again. Bjorn. Oh, we talk to him about Do you know one. anything about Isaac Davner's accident at the factory? Some think it wasn't an accident, but he should have known better. Known what? Sir? Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Anyway, to the factory. Whoosh. Whoosh. I keep thinking that my computer's lagging or something, and I'm like, no, no, that's just the art style. Hi, Sheriff Bog. Yeah, I'm uh, Nelson Tethers of the FBI's Department of Puzzle. Nelson Tethers, good to meet you. We got a real mess here. Yes, we do. We do? Oh, yeah. It's going to be a while before we can get this factory running again. But my job is to get this factory back to making erasers. Oh, Agent no? Agent Tethers, you're in a right pickle. I like these guys. Well, I like, I like I should the, uh, the voice acting. Some in questions this game. about the incident, then. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd do if I was a big, important FBI boy. What was this incident? Well, we don't need to be dramatic. What happened? There was an explosion. What? Oh, yeah. oh we don't need to be dramatic. It was explosion. only an explosion. The foreman just never came home. Oh, yeah. I've got a puzzle. Let's talk, though. What Let's talk about the, the other things before we do the puzzle. My notes don't have a lot of details. 
Well, we're still trying to figure that out. One day after work, Mr. Dabner just never came home. The accident was pretty bad. Oh, is there, uh, is there a body? Nope. He's just gone. Isaac Dabner's his name, if you don't have that in your notes. We don't even know if he died in that explosion? Won't be able to find that out till we find a way into the factory. Interesting. What did your investigation turn up? Not much. I can't figure out how to get past this lock. Well, that's because it's missing a piece. I can see that just by looking at it. So it is. I guess that's why you make the big bucks, right? That's right, sir. Yeah, totally. Time of accident. When huh? did the accident take place? Well, I've been trying to figure that out myself. Here's what I know. The Rest Easy Guard Service was deployed to keep watch over the factory from midnight to midnight. From their statements, can you determine the time of the big noise? One hour before the last shift started. Bernie put in the full eight hours. Pop got the shortest three hours. I think he worked from six till I was relieved. Okay, so it was midnight to midnight. Twelve to twelve, okay. Yep. Um, and we can click the clock to change the, the time. But yeah, it was twelve to what? Twelve to twelve. Hmm. Now, worked from six till I was relieved. So we know that we know that Iggy wasn't the last shift. Neither was Bernie, or was he? We know no, Bernie put in Bernie. eight. We know Bernie put in eight hours. And Bernie was not the last hour, or last uh, shift. Well, we don't necessarily know that one yet. Actually, we do. First of all, we know only Bernie put in the full eight hours, so no one did more than eight, and Bernie did eight. We know this guy worked from six till I was till he was relieved. We know he didn't complete it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we know he didn't do six hours to complete it. Mm-hmm. But we know he did more than three hours. Or we, we know he did, uh, he had to have done more than three hours, because Pop did three hours. Um. Which means I think Pop was the last shift. Let's see, well, definitely not the first shift, and not the third, because that was Bernie's. Um. Let's see, eight and six is. Al didn't do eight hours, so. That is... Iggy must have started at six a.m. Hold, hold on, I'm just doing some. I'm trying to math it out. Eight and six and three. That's nine and eight, which is seventeen hours. That would mean that Al did seven hours as well. I'm counting seven, seven, eight, and three is twenty-five hours. Where did you get two sevens? I thought that was what you said. No. Hmm. Pop did three. Well, we don't know how much Iggy did, but we know that. Okay, so you know, Pop did three. Bernie did um, eight. Eight. And we know that nobody did less than three or more than eight. Mm -hmm. So that leaves us four through seven as the options for filling in the last 24 hours. So if we start at midnight, we go to six. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Obviously. I'm thinking... L was midnight to six in the morning. Okay. Then Iggy worked from six till. Let's 
out, it, the Iggy could have worked from six to one. Yeah. And that puts him at uh, seven hours. So Bernie then would be one to nine. Yep, which Bernie would means, be one to nine, and Pop which would means be the, last the explosion three. would have happened at eight. Yep. Well, let's find out if that's right. Yep. The math works out. Yep. Bernie worked eight hours of the 24 hour day, Pop worked three, Al worked six hours, and Iggy worked seven. Iggy had to start at 6 a.m. because he was relieved by another guard. <coughs> Al came first and worked to 6 hours. Because that was the thing. He, Iggy couldn't have been 6 p.m. because there's not enough room in here for either of the two people to other two people to have filled it in. Yep. Al came first to work the 6 hour shift, then Iggy started at 6 a.m. and did it at 1 p.m. Bernie worked the third shift since he heard the noise. His shift went till 9 p.m., so the explosion happened at 8 p.m. If there was an explosion at that time, wouldn't the icicles on the building have been knocked off? Hmm, good point. Maybe they grew back. Huh. Well, I... Listen, why don't you meet me down at the Moose Ear Diner later? I have some files related to the case that you might be able to help me with. Oh, probably more puzzles. Okay, but I really think... Agent Tethers, it's a pleasure working with you. You're doing a great job. Great we jet. get the moose here in a bit. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. We got some gum up there. Hmm. Interesting. Out at the eraser factory. The doors to the factory are very locked. Very Some locked. sort of custom-built contraption has got this place locked up tighter than Fort Knox. The device seems damaged, though. It seems to be missing a piece. Indeed. How are we supposed to solve a puzzle if it doesn't have all the pieces? Oh, no! Well, I guess to the Moosey Diner, then. Sounds about right. Well, this place is out in the middle of nowhere. Don't think that's how you use a wrench. I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain that's not how you use a wrench. Yeah, what are these then? Tiny footprints. There seems to be some tiny footprints in the snow around the diner. How strange. But I don't see any kids around here. Possibilities include stealthy children, tiny animals wearing boots, cats wearing shoes. Nice, Nelson. Now that's going in FBI records. And I'm still recording. Tethers out. <laughs> ah, poor Tethers. Are you still there, man? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I hadn't lost you. Excuse me, I see you're working on your sign. Is it safe for me to go into the diner? Excuse me. You gotta fix the sign. Well, all right then. All right. Something wrong with your sign? Uh, I said, is there something wrong with- You a cop, I ain't got time for cops. I'm not a cop. Look, I gotta get this sign fixed before it gets dark. I don't want to be out here after dark, if you know what I mean. I don't, actually. What do you mean by that? It's just a fuse, but I can't remember which one it is. Not That's why I'm smacking it with a wrench. In my head. Oh boy, what? somebody else here whispers. whispers. That, get the fuse that can only me. be good. I'm getting cold out here. So we've got to complete the sequence, huh? Which is... Ah! Have you spotted it, Zach? Yeah, it's the second from the left, right? 
It's this one here. Yep. That one could have actually thrown me if I hadn't uh, caught on real quick. I could have yeah. seen myself stumbling on that one for a while. I mean, they're mirrored numbers, right? Yep. But I could have seen myself missing that if I hadn't noticed it on the two. That should do it. Hey, what do you know? This ought to keep the little buggers away. Little what? Well, I gotta finish getting this sign mounted. See you later. Well, we'll see. I still don't think that's how you I use it. I don't suppose wrench. you know anything about the eraser factory accident? Don't suppose I do. Did you know Isaac Davner? Not much. Heard he had some kind of accident. Feel bad for his wife, Glory. <laughs> Such a pretty girl. I should really talk to her. Do you know where I can find her? Yes, I do. So, where <laughs> can I find her? Inside. Fair enough. Goodbye. I tell you, the people here are creepy. I'm betting that's Lori. Yep. Ah, we're getting stairs again. The dead eyes. The dead eyes. Yep. I swear, much more of this. I'm gonna start talking about the Innsmouth look. Oh. What's this then? There's some tobacco on the counter. It smells like cherry. I guess the waitress hasn't been in much of a cleaning mood lately. You know, I'm right here. Yeah, that seems like a little bit of a dickish thing to say, dude. Excuse me, ma'am. Um, miss? Waitress lady? Welcome to the Moosier Diner. I'll be right with you. Can I help you with that? Gloria is distracted by the puzzle of food she's preparing to serve. Fit all of the food items on the plate in such a way that none of them overlap to get her attention. Uh, all right. Seems an odd way to get someone's attention, but everything seems puzzle-based in this town. Interesting. Well, the cake obviously goes in the upper right. Yeah. I'd say the carrot would have to come over here and the this would have to be down here. Oh, they latch together. Oh, <laughs> I latched these together back then. Oh, and I've apparently attached something else. All right, this is working. Better than I had intended for it to. Oh. Seem to have grabbed. This would go here then. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Just set you that on the plate. This is one heck of a meal. Indeed. Fishes even have slices eyes on it. I like how it just makes up go. random things to say Delicious. whenever there's not really a hint. Thanks. So, uh, what's good here? I don't know. It's all fine. Oh, okay. What's your name? Lori Davner. Oh, uh -huh. So, I'm Nelson. Are you feeling okay? Yes. No. I'm just thinking about my husband. What's wrong with your husband, ma'am? Dude, Is you know he okay? this. He will be. Well, I'm with the FBI's Department of Puzzles Research. 
I need to ask you a few questions. An accident at the eraser factory caused it to shut down. Do you know anything about that? Of course I do. What have you heard? Uh, well, nothing really. I mean, just that it was an accident, like everyone says. Mm -hmm. Uh, factory foreman, Isaac Davner. He was your husband? Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. There's not much in my files about him. That's okay. He's a great man. I'm so proud of him. For? Just so proud. Oh. The okay. look on her face. <laughs> Something is up seems here. a bit odd. Anything I should know about him? Well, I think he's got a bit of a crush on me, but he's harmless. Could he have hurt your husband to get to you? <laughs> oh no. He wouldn't hurt a fly. He even avoids stepping on rocks so he won't accidentally hurt any critters living below. I wish people wouldn't tease him for that, Daryl. <laughs> Has the factory closure affected business? Yeah. People tend to hang around here longer now that they aren't going to work. Fair enough. Normally, that'd be a good thing, but I've been pretty distracted. I see that. Maybe I can help. When these three couples walked into the diner, Glory thought she knew which, what each would order. She was wrong, and now she's forgotten who gets what. Here's what she does recall. Okay. These are my sort of thing. These are- I like these as well. Nobody ordered a meal resembling their spouse. One lady ordered a meal resembling the fish-eating man sitting next to her. Only one patron resembles his or her meal. The ham plate should be set down next to the banana split. I can see why she thought she knew what people would buy. So we know the fish goes to a man. Yep. Fishing goes to a man. And nobody... Uh, has nobody ordered something. a dish that resembles their spouse. So it can't be this guy. So the fish has to go to this person or this person. Uh, go back to the things again no one lady ordered a meal resembling the fish eating man sitting next to her right so I'm saying oh the, okay. yeah so I'm saying who's eating the fish if there's, ah, if there's right. a fish eating man sitting next to her and they don't eat they didn't eat anything to resemble their spouse so this couldn't be the fish eating man so either this is the fish eating man or this is the fish eating well, let's put it in front of one. Just oh, wait. Just work it out. We have something else that uh, that that decides it. Nobody ordered anything that looks like their spouse. One so person it, it, ordered a meal. Only one pa patron ordered a meal that resembles themselves. Yeah, here's the thing, though. With that, in, with that being the case, this guy couldn't be the fish-eating person because she can't eat something that looks like him. So it had to have been this guy. Who ate the fish, and then she ate the onion rings. Because she can't eat the onion rings because she's a spouse. Okay. No, no, no. Didn't mean to eat it. At least if I'm reading that correctly. Because it says, one lady ordered a meal resembling a fish eating man sitting next to her, and nobody ordered a meal resembling their spouse. So that seems to that that seems to fit. We know ham should be next to banana split. Well, can't be here. Because banana split can't be here. Uh, because can't eat, uh, can't uh, be next to anything. So we know that this is not ham or banana split. Mm. Oh, one other thing. What? We know that, um... Okay, okay I, I, I've got a suggestion. Give the banana split to the man in the back, and the ham to the buffalo-looking dude. Okay. 
gonna give you another suggestion. Because he's the one and have him. Mm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So I'm thinking. Because I was thinking something. Well, then if we do. I think that works. I don't think that uh, breaks any of the rules. Ham is next to banana split. Okay, rule one was nobody ordered a meal resembling their spouse. So we're good on this one. We're good on these two. And we're good on these two. And rule two was something about fish. A lady ordered something resembling the fish eating man next to them. Alright, so that, that rule is followed. Only one patron resembled his or her meal. There's banana split man with his banana split. And nobody else, right? Yep. And the ham is next to the banana split, so I think we've got it. Yep, next to the banana split. Yep, that's right. I think we've got it. I love these kind of puzzles. Just basic logic puzzles. There we go. Yep, the chicken woman is the only woman sitting to, next to a man besides her spouse. That's how I figured that one out. Ah. And really, that's what triggers everything else. Once you know that, it sort of fills in all the rest of it. Yeah. That wasn't so tough. Yeah, I guess not. Could I have a bit more of your time, ma'am? Sure. Though we don't actually need it, because we've uh, done everything there. Hi there, I'm Agent Tethers with the FBI. Sir, you seem stressed. Do you know something about the factory you'd like to let me in on? I don't know anything. Sir, it's against the law to withhold information or lie to a federal agent. Yeah, I'm into some stuff. Hmm. So, what's your name? Steve. Sir, I'm here about the factory. If you've got nothing to do with it, then however you spend your time doesn't concern me. So... There's nothing you can tell me about the factory. I don't co-mingle with the factory folk. You haven't heard about anything suspicious going on, have you? Nothing more than usual. What stuff are you into? I airlift wooden gnomes out of Scoggins. Huh. With birds. To where? Why? How? Black market trinket rings. Big money. Couldn't you just use the mail? Okay. <laughs> Can you determine the number of gnomes? type of bird has a certain weight limit. Which bird is shown as shown carrying the maximum amount it can. Birds may team up on heavy loads, each carrying what he can. Freight must be balanced evenly between a bird's two legs. Interesting. Interesting. So each leg is put to set given, number of gnomes. We are given some information here. So blue bird can carry one gnome per leg. Yes. So obviously that means that the blue bird that the that the package on the left is carrying one gnome. Yep. One is there. Oh. There's one gnome here. Okay. So that means Did, that would the tell duck us that the ducks two, carry a max of four. Two, two on each leg. Yep. So that's two here and two here, and from so this that duck package two. is obviously four. Yep. This is another one being held by a duck and a bird. That's three and one. Yep. So that's one, three, two, four, three, one. One, three, two, four, three, one. 
because 4 and the 2 3s is 10, and 2 is 12, and then 2 1s is 14. Yep. These aren't, like, super hard, but you do still have to think a little bit when you're in on them. Yep. Which is nice. You know, I don't feel like I'm tearing my hair out, but I'm enjoying the working my brain a little bit. That's it. Thanks for helping balance out some things. Another puzzle solved. Hello, gentlemen. A bit early for a lunch break, isn't it? Until the eraser factory opens again, Daryl and I have nowhere else to go. Yeah, me and Daryl got nowhere else to go. So it's oh, Daryl and Daryl. That's great. Then you don't mind if I ask you a few questions? Yeah, yeah. As soon as I get these bugs back in place. What? Why do you have bugs in a diner? You gonna help or not? Daryl's famous in famous insect collection has gone AWOL. Box the Mac up again by stringing lines between adjoining points, keeping these rules in mind. Enclosed all of the bugs using the fewest number of lines to draw a box possible. A box can be any size, but it must be four-sided. Bugs of the same kind can share a box. Each green grasshopper needs three squares of territory, including the space it's on. Each pink puddle paddler needs two, including the space it's on. Alright. So, for example, we could do this. And that would work. All right, and this guy those, needs those grass. Nope, nope, nope. Bugs of the same can share a box, so we get the six there. Yeah, like that. Ah, uh, we can do four. We can do these guys like this. Yep. We can do this like this. That's pretty symmetrical. Yeah. And that's one, two, and each one is one, two, three. Oh, not quite. What do you mean? Is this not right? Oh, no, that's right. One, two, three. Yeah, that's good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah, it is pretty symmetrical. Nice and simple. All right, then. Uh... Daryl, thanks. Well, you're welcome. Oh, look at Darryl. that! He did it! Yes. Now, will you answer my questions? Sure. Fire them at me. Alright, All right. let's figure some stuff out. You yeah. two are employed at the factory. Would you say it's a safe place to work? Well, safe as any other place, I guess. Yeah, except the new wing is haunted. No, it isn't. You better quit listening to those hippies. Why do you think the new wing is haunted? When the factory expanded, we built a new wing. A bunch of locals got angry we had to clear out part of the forest to do it. Because spirits live in the forest. Hmm. All right. You mentioned something about spirits in the forest. Really? Depends on who you ask. You won't see me out in the woods after sundown. Well, me neither. But there ain't no spirits. Do you guys know what happened to the foreman? Yeah, the lobster bit him. Shut up, Daryl. Wait, what? What do you mean a lobster bit him? He means Mike Lobb. Mike and Isaac didn't get along all the time. Had a little bit of a fight. That's because Isaac thought he was smarter than all of us floor guys. Well, he probably is. No, he ain't. Just because he's a college boy don't make him smart. Well, all right then. What do you know about the guy fixing the sign outside? Randall Scruffman. Weird guy. He thinks the trees talk to him. Yeah, but huh. he sure picked the right line of work. He's going to be employed forever. Stuff always needs fixing. I think he looks extra hard for stuff to fix around here. Yeah, so he can be close to Glory. She's the waitress here. Sweeter than moose milk in the morning. Moose milk in the morning. Thanks, yeah, man. I there thought that was kind of weird, too. I... Well, I think that's everyone to talk to, so I think it's time to do what Hello, we actually Sheriff. need for. Agent Tether, good. You're here. 
Yeah, listen, I wanted to ask you... No time. I got a hunch about the factory. I got security Ooh, camera records here of people leaving the factory. Good. It'd be helpful to talk with whoever left last. Exactly what I was thinking. I mixed up the photos so we can put them back in the right order. What? Why would you do that? You know how it is. No, I don't. That's evidence. <laughs> it's not even pretending at this point. It's just like, no, no, we just did this to make you to make you have to do a puzzle. <laughs> uh huh. So you have to show in which order. Well, this is an easy one actually. This is obviously the first one because there's no other people. Uh, no other people are uh, no other footprints. This is second because the only other footprints are the ones going straight. This is obviously next because it's the guy going to his car. And this is the last one, just walking off on his own. Yep. It's all in the footprint. The way you know between this... the second and the fourth is the car. How long is this clip been going? Uh, oh, shit. Longer than I meant for it to. Sorry about that, guys. We are gonna call it here and do a break. Uh, see y'all around.